Hello and uh, welcome back to 80 Bytes. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. I'm sorry about that. But the uh, main reason for that was I uh, got a job. I was very busy. Uh, but I'm back, more or less. And uh, welcome back to making a, a Z80 based computer from scratch. So, last time we were talking about uh, the memory mapping and all that. A uh, little correction on that front. We don't actually need I.O. on that. So, what I drew last time was I made a. Uh, I'll just make a rough little diagram. A ROM down here, and then our RAM up here, and in the middle of this we had our uh, I.O. stuff. Oh, we don't need that. We don't need this I.O. The Z80 has uh, pins and circuitry inside of it that can handle all that for us. It also has the instructions in and out, which uh, can handle all that for us. We don't need uh, to memory map any of that, which is uh, great. What's happened since last time, planning-wise? Um, you know, I was too busy to make a video. However, I kept on looking into things I made diagrams, prototypes, all that kind of stuff, and eventually I end up on this thing. This here is the PIX80, as I call it, that's the name of the computer I'm giving you here, uh, Prototype 1. This here could execute programs from ROM. So basically the CPU was in here, the, the ROM was in here, and uh, the, yeah, there were some control chips in here, which uh, I don't know which, one, which ones were here specifically, or you know, which order they were in. But, uh, yeah, this was the most basic setup I had. CPU here, ROM here, and it executed programs, and yeah. And I could run a few simple programs uh, with this. For instance, I made a little program that like spanned the Fibonacci sequence. You know, that worked. Um, and then I tried um, getting LCD input and output stuff, which didn't end up working, mainly because everything else... I, it was basically an afterthought, like trying to cram it on the board and everything. It was a mess, same with RAM, it wasn't accounted for, it wasn't planned, I didn't know anything at the time. It's it's crowded, it's messy, it was awful to work with. And yeah, there's a reason I didn't pursue this uh, prototype. And then I decided it's time to make a new prototype, and this is a prototype 2. It's a lot more organized, I had, I planned this thing for like multiple months, honestly. <laughs> I uh, have had diagrams of how everything should be laid out, how everything should work. This here is a, a more refined version, also it's an, on a nicer board. Uh, yeah, CPU sockets, um, ROM, RAM, LCD, I put again, which this time actually ended up working, because, you know, this time I actually knew what I was doing, more or less. I referenced a fuck ton of data sheets. Over here we have uh, those three, th those same three chips actually, just, you know, configured in a way where they actually do what they're supposed to do. Uh, in this case, it's a NOR chip, a NAND chip, uh, no, wait, uh, it's, it's a NOT chip, a NAND chip, and a, a 3 to 8 demultiplexer, which in this case is used, uh, demultiplexer basically you give it a binary number, and then it makes a single pin turn on based on that number. So, like, you have binary 0, and then, like, the pin that represents 0 turns on, you have binary 7, and the pin representing that 7 turns on. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty useful. I'm glad they explained some of the schematics I got going and my logic behind how everything works there. I'll probably cover that in a future video. This is more supposed to be less of a, you know, educational video. It's more of a what happened, <laughs> why, why was I gone? And also I got some simple input going, which was also very exciting. We're using inter interrupts, but it was uh, kind of messy. But, you know, I'll, I'll try to figure something out uh, as this time goes on. This is where we're at. I'm currently uh, figuring out prototype 3, hopefully with some uh, zero insertion force sockets, because uh, what I had to do with uh, these ones here, I always had to pry them out, as you can see by these these marks here. <laughs> I always had to pry them out, and yeah, that didn't end up working too well. I made a mistake last time, and I've got some actual working prototypes now from parts, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, now, some of you might be saying, like, oh yeah, why, why are you not like getting, you know, if you have like functional design, why are you not, not, just not getting a... Uh, PCBs printed. The main reason is I a I just enjoy doing you know I I feel smart doing this. That was that's one reason. Uh, and b I want to show that anyone could build this. Basically, like all you need for this is a board. Technically, you don't, you don't even need the sockets. You could just you could just do this with with a board and like these six chips. Honestly, anyone with some spare wire could theoretically build this thing, which is a main goal that I have. But yeah, uh, that's the basic gist of it. Where I've been, what I've been up to. And I really hope that I can make like a proper video showcasing the assembly and uh, everything of uh, the Prototype 3, which would be pretty cool. Maybe like make a soldering video. Who knows? Maybe like a stream or whatever you feel like doing. Uh, whatever the case, it was nice talking to you again. Uh, and I'll see you next time.
hopefully relatively soon. Not in like six months. Uh, have a nice day. Bye.